Good evening. Hopefully my phone stand that I'm filming this on will continue to hold up. But if it crashes, then I guess I gotta start the video over. Anyways, <clears throat> is it a moral, I'll ask a moral question for a Sunday. Is it a moral for a guy to sleep with a woman and not offer anything more than that? This is basically the question that was kind of posed to me recently, and I wrote something on it in a, in, a, in a private group I'm in, and I thought I would share it for all of you. I'll kind of read it for, for ver, verbatim. Blah, blah, I can't talk. I'll read it verbatim, but I'll make little commentaries in between. We'll try not to let the video drag on too long. Um, but I know some of you hear that question, and your knee-jerk reaction is to think... Well, of course that's immoral, right? Why aren't you offering her every possible thing you could offer her? I mean, she's sleeping with you, so isn't that what you should be doing, <laughs> right? And that's because you're kind of trapped in a gynocentric way of thinking that you've been socially conditioned. So I'm going to offer some alternative views and where that comes from. Now, some of this stuff isn't going to sit well with some of you, and that's okay. The, the truth doesn't always feel good to listen to, okay? Understand, too, I'm not disparaging women when I write this. There's nothing wrong with women in the sense of, like, I don't have a criticism against an entire gender um, I, I, any more than I would against an entire male gender, okay? But the fact of the matter is, is that there, we do, as the, the animal part of us, has a savage nature that is very amoral, we'll say. It's not good, it's not moral, it's not righteous, it's not necessarily evil, it's very neutral from a moral standpoint and then can often end up causing people to do very evil things and very bad things based on our natures. Our nature is very savage. Whether you're a male or a female, that is the case. And so when we explore these topics, we're exploring savage parts of our nature. Now, I'm not the only person to have thought of this. I mean, the Christian religion basically says that. And since people are made of sin, and of course, you have to turn to Christianity and Jesus and God in order to be saved and, not, and to not be an immoral, savage person. All right, Buddhism kind of argues the same thing in a different way instead of following necessarily Jesus, but you're following a path to enlightenment. Why do you need to be enlightened? Because as a human being, just by itself, the, your animal nature is very savage and very immoral. So, when I read this, don't look at it and think I'm criticizing women, an entire gender, or anything like that, okay? I'm speaking about the reality of what our savage nature is, and then how that applies to sexual strategy and morality. And you can take those lessons and that truth and apply it to your own mating strategy, or dating and relationship uh, behavior and approach okay that's where that is we got to take reality for what it is and then and then it's what we do with that reality that can make our make or break how we live our lives okay so to answer the beginning I said women aren't damaged goods that was the implication however their biological mating strategy is parasitic and self-destructive for 190,000 years, hyper, uh, hypergamy worked well from a, an evolutionary standpoint. People generally didn't live past 30. There were no real epiphany stages as far as we knew or strategies to secure long-term happiness. They fucked the alpha guy, most dominant guys in the tribe, and got pregnant within a polygamous tribal structure as many times as they could until they eventually died. Fucking and discarding worked well for both males and females when the tribe shared all the duties to include child rearing. 
Now that our life expectancy is three times longer, a parasitic strategy becomes self-destructive. In terms of our happiness, anyway. In comes monogamy 12,000 years ago and social rules as an adaptive strategy. But that strategy has only been in play for the last 12,000 years. And today, with socialist-style governments, gynocentrism, and the state taking care of children on the backs of men, um, oftentimes through forced payments, child support, or taxes and entitlement programs, among other things, it tickles our pol polygamous roots once again. Women, by design, wanted to be fucked and taken care of. They still want that. That's what they want. Okay. In absence of being able to trap that alpha male, they will use the alpha to fuck and then use the beta male or the weaker male for provisions. And they will cry to that beta male about how they are discarded by men as part of that overall strategy. They will marry that beta male for provisions, the nice guy, and they will then cheat. Or they'll look for opportunities to cheat, which is their hypergamous nature, or they will fantasize about cheating with the alpha. Think Fifty Shades of Grey. All while systematically breaking down the beta into that plow horse slave. Even if she traps her alpha, okay, because uh, her hypergamous brain is always questioning if he's truly her alpha and always seeking to level up, she will attempt to challenge that alpha until he becomes a provisioning plow horse if he allows it. The, the end state, if we allow it, is open cuckoldry where men are enslaved by female hypergamy. Alphas become the fuck horse, basically, for multiple women, and betas become the plow horse, providing provisions, each enslaved in their own way. So, where do morality and ethics fit in when we're talking about dating and relationships, given our evolutionary past and given our current biological drives and mating strategies? Well, if you're a guy, your choices are as follows. You can be the guy or one of the guys that has sex with her. That she wants to have sex with. Or you could be the guy who has sex with her and takes care of her. In the case of a long-term relationship or a marriage or some sort of arrangement like that. Or you can be the guy who takes care of her in exchange for occasional sex and the illusion that she loves and respects you. When she is making her date mating decisions, when she is deciding who she wants you to be, the guy she, she fucks, the guy she fucks who also takes care of her, or the beta provisioning slave who she lies to. She's deciding which one she wants you to be. All you are doing is saying to her, which deal you're willing to accept when you go forth and you date and meet women on that sexual marketplace. So, beta provisioning slave. You interested in that? No, I hope not. Okay. The limits you're basically setting are we can fuck and enjoy our time together. That's it. From there, as things develop, we can decide if I am also good going to take care of you in terms of being in a long-term relationship. So we change now the terms of the dating uncommitted scenario we're in. And if I'm not interested in taking care of you, then we can continue to have sex until those terms no longer serve you or my needs. So as the male, that is basically what you're saying. Okay. Is that immoral? Well, no, it isn't. It's called setting your standards. Because if, through demonstration mostly, rather than explication, 
So it's not like you have a meeting and a contract and you talk about this. It's your actions and how you demonstrate it. But if you demonstrate through your actions and through answering her inquiries honestly, you know, if you, if you are honest about your intentions, regardless of what they are, then what you're doing is ethical. To be immoral about this would be to lie about it. To talk about marriage and future plans, for example, when you have no in intentions of doing that. To stay in a commitment and pretend like you need to be, want to be in the commitment, but you really have plans to get out of it. That would be immoral. Uh, to pretend you're monogamous and imposing monogamy on her while you have sex with other women, right? And cheat on her. That would be immoral, okay? Or how about to be her friend when you really want to have sex with her, but you're, you know, accepting and faking friendship. And really, though, what you want is something more. That would be immoral. To take her offer to be her beta male provisioner only with the hopes of changing those terms later where, she, where you can be her, her alpha guy that she wants to have sex with. That's also immoral and dishonest. Okay, All of those choices there are, are unethical. When you're not honest and upfront about what your intentions are, that's where it becomes unethical. That's where it becomes wrong, okay? Now, when a woman decides to have sex with the dominant male that she wants to have sex with, the alpha, she is well aware of the risks of being discarded. Yet, she, And she will make that decision usually within the first couple of minutes of meeting somebody, okay? Whether or not she would or she wouldn't. But, you know, provided you pass congruency tests and you are deemed and perceived to be that alpha male, she will have sex with him anyway. She will have sex with the alpha male despite the risk most of the time and try every strategy in the book to keep him around and to commit him, no matter how sinister those strategies are, if she does decide that's what she wants from him. Now, if she loses that bet, on that alpha guy that she made a conscious decision to take the risk with and have sex with and try to pin him down on a commitment with, if she loses that bet, she'll then just be sad and she'll expect other weaker males in droves to console her and offer her attention and prizes for her informed decision. Okay? Again, it's self-destructive. So, guys, all you can do is protect yourself, okay? Don't lie to her even though she will likely lie to you, all right? And you leave her better than you found her by treating her with empathy and compassion, but without compromising your values and your boundaries and your needs. The way to lose this game... There it goes. You see that? Foul. Damn it. I made it all the way to the end. Man, I have to hold it. I need to get a new, uh, a new stand. Stupid thing. There we go. I'm not going to even edit that out for YouTube. That's a little comic relief maybe to this very serious, serious uh, <laughs> monologue I'm doing, right? But anyways, to lose the dating game badly as a male would be to say, I'm not going to pursue sex with her unless I know I want to take care of her. I'm a trad con. Taking that stance, right? What this is doing is negotiating your desire, your desire to be with her sexually for provisioning and protection, which is the essence of, of accepting beta enslavement. All right? And allowing that enslavement is not a moral decision, is not the moral decision. That's the right decision for either you or her. All right, so that's, I paraphrased a lot of it, read most of it. Look, when we only live to be 30 years old and we're hunter-gatherers, a polygamous, hypergamous mating strategy worked just fine. Okay, because there wasn't such a thing as long-term happiness. Because you, you, your happiness ended at 25 to 30 years old when you died. 
all right? When guys were spreading seed with multiple women, okay, and then dying when they were 22 years old on a hunt or in battle with another tribe, they lived a good life, right? That was it. Nowadays, we live to be 75, 85, 90 years old, easily. I think life expectancy now is, what, 86 in the first world? We are living three times as long as what our evolutionary past and sexual strategies adapted to. Three times as long. And it's only happened that life expectancy has only risen to be that high within the last, maybe we'll say, thousand years gradually. Okay? In a, large, in, in, in a 200,000 years of existence, it's not much time. So our internal biological mating strategies... If we follow those and we don't set guidelines for ourselves, if we don't let our brains dictate what our goals are, will crash us into the wall, guys or girls, but especially women. Especially women, they, they are like determined to destroy themselves in their relationships and in their dating. It, it's their biology is determined for that. Now women who are aware can make decisions and not allow that to happen, but if you allow it to happen, she will put you in a beta provisioning status. And she will not be attracted to you the way that you want her to be. She will not love you the way that you envision her to love you. And she will not respect you. And she will go off and she will basically cuck you. Whether that means emotionally cheating with other dudes, actually cheating, looking to cheat, reading romance novels, thinking of cheating... Okay, you will not be her sexual best. And even if you started off that way, you won't be seven to ten years into that long-term relationship or into that marriage. All right? That's if you let it happen. But as far as dating is concerned, right? No, you do not, you do not have to offer the contract of anything else besides sex as long as that was the thing that you offered to begin with. If you didn't lie about it, you didn't make up a story or whatever, and you said you were clear about it, that we we're just dating and, you know, physical, if sex happens, that's what I want. You know, and I'm not committing to you. I'm not offering to pay your bills. I'm not offering to take care of your kids. None of those things. Not unless, you know, maybe down the line, we have to get to know each other and grow together. Either we're going to grow into me wanting to do that, or that'll never happen, okay? That's a risk you take. Enjoy your time with me. You set that standard. Do not, ain't, do not lead with your wallet. Lead with your parenting ability. Lead with, I'm a good guy and I'll take care of you. She hasn't earned that. You don't know whether she's anybody that deserves that. And those of you who are sitting there thinking that this is terrible, what I'm saying, especially you males, how many women have you been with that totally didn't deserve the kindness and resources you put into them. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Most of you, okay, have been with woman after woman. If you're single and listening to this, you've probably been and of any of, of any adult age. You've probably been with a handful of women. Women that, when you led with the, your wallet, you led with your nice guy characteristics. You led with your your I'm a good guy stuff, I'm a good parent, all that kind of stuff, I'll take care of you uh, kind of stuff. When you led with that, what you ended up with a lot of times is somebody who took advantage of that and didn't have the desire for you that you would have wished. And it falls apart. Okay, she becomes the nagging, bitchy girlfriend or wife, and it falls to pieces. Because you're told you're supposed to follow a morality where if you guys have any sort of sex, then you better do a bunch of shit for her. And I'm telling you that that's wrong. It's the wrong strategy, okay? And I went through a little prose here that explains exactly why in detail. It's because of our evolutionary past, her desires, her strategy. She will literally, just by nature of you doing that, she will put you in that status and you will not be the person that she wants to be with, but she will certainly take your resources. And this is most women, most of the time, okay? 
every woman all of the time, every woman all of the time has this biological ingrained strategy, however. All right, whether they act on it and how they act on it or not is up to them, but it's there. And hey, it's no different than your strategy to spread seed to multiple women, okay, to, to sleep with all anything you can sleep with. I mean, that is part of your biological strategy. If you don't put controls on that or use your head, that can get you in trouble, right? Well, they have a strategy too, make no mistake. And if you're leading as the beta provisioner, if you are thinking you owe them something other than just having a good time on a date and potential sexual encounter because you've had sex with them before, you, know, you can't, you do not allow yourself to get obligated to a woman, okay? Or, or guilted into being obligated into a woman. Do not approach your dating from a standpoint of, let me make sure I want to take care of her first before I allow us to get emotionally close. I promise you that will put a barrier in between any kind of emotion she's going to have for seeing you as her most dominant and best sexual option. And she won't see you that way. And if she sticks around, it's really to, to execute that other strategy, which is to use you for your resources and not to love you the way that you want to be loved. So, is it immoral? Back to the question. No, I went really deep into it, didn't I? But no, it's not. As long as you are upfront about what you were doing and do not let yourself get obligated to somebody unless that is someplace you wanna be. All right, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoy the video.